In the previous video, we have seen how to design capacitively coupled resonator filter for band bus filter. In this video, we are going to represent an example for such band bus filter. So, it is required to design a band bus filter using capacitive coupled series resonators with 0.5 dB equal ribbon band bus. The center frequency is 2 GHz and the bandwidth is 10%. The input admittance of the filter is 50 ohm and it is required to obtain at least 20 dB attenuation at 2.2 GHz. So the first step is to determine the order of the required filter from the specification of the required attenuation at this frequency. From the frequency transformation, we know that the frequency transformation from band bus filter to low bus filter is obtained by equating 1 over delta omega over omega node minus omega node over omega to omega. So, in this case, the value of omega node is 2 gigahertz, the value of omega is 2.2 and delta is 0.1 the bandwidth so the required or the corresponding frequency of 2.2 GHz at the low bus filter prototype is 1.91 so this frequency in the band bus filter the corresponding frequency in the low bus filter is 1.91 9 so in the case of the low bus filter prototype omega over omega c minus 1 will correspond to 1.19 over 1 the filter prototype low bus filter prototype has omega c equal 1 so 1.91 minus 1 so the difference omega over omega c minus 1 is 0.91. Now, according to the required specification, we are talking about equal ribbon 0.5 dB. So, we are going to use the chart of equal ribbon 0.5 dB. And we have omega over omega c minus 1 to be 0.91. And it is required to be greater than 20 dB. So this is 20 dB. This is 0.91. And this is 20 dB. So it is required to be greater than 20 dB. Here, if the order of the filter is 2, it would be less than 20 dB. If the order of the filter is 3, it would be greater than 20 dB. So the order n equals 3 satisfy the required condition for the attenuation at 2.2 gigahertz okay so from this we know now the order of our filter is n equals 3 now from the table of 0.5 dB ribbon we take the order n equals 3 we obtain G1, G2, G3, and G4. From G1, G2, G3, we can obtain the required values for the inverters. So, Z0, G1, equal square root by delta over 2, G1. G1 here would be 1.5. Delta is 0.1. So we can obtain the value of the first inverter and Z0 is 50 ohm. The second inverter and the third inverter would be obtained from these two values G2 and G3 such that Z0 J2 would be by delta 
over 2 G1 G2 G1 G2 and Z0 G3 would be by delta over 2 G2 G3 G2 G3 so we are going to calculate G2 and G3 from this relation finally G4 is determined by Z0 G4 the square root by delta 2 G3 G4 G3 G4 by following up these equations we can obtain the values of the inverters Z0 Gm and by dividing by Z0 we can calculate the value of the inverter Gm okay now from Z0 Gn 1 2 3 4 we can obtain the corresponding admittance Bi Bi would be Gi over 1 minus Z0 Gi square so by using the obtained values of the inverters we can obtain the corresponding admittances and effectively the relation between the capacitive admittance and the value of the capacitance is that the value of the capacitance Cn equals the value of the admittance Bn over omega naught or in other words Bn equal omega naught Cn so by knowing the value of Bn we can obtain the equivalent capacitance Cn C1, C2, C3 and C4 so C1 is the value of the required capacitance at the first gap C2 is the required capacitance in the second gap and so on this required capacitance it can be obtained by adjusting the value of delta the spacing between the transmission line section there is the relations between the value of the capacitance and the gap between the two transmission line sections using this formulas we can find out the required distance delta 1 here delta 2 delta 3 and so on okay so this is the value of the capacitance from the values of the capacitance or sorry from the values of v we can obtain the value of theta i theta i equals by which correspond to lambda over 2 length minus 1 over 2 10 minus 1 2 z naught bi plus 10 minus 1 2 z naught bi plus 1 so by knowing the values of bi we can determine the elliptical length theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 and from obtaining the value of theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 this is a transmission line section here the output transmission line section here uh, but knowing theta 1 theta 2 theta 3 we can determine the electrical length of the first resonator the electrical length of the second resonator and the electrical length of the third resonator the values of theta in degrees obtained here this is a value of theta and it should be noted that it is quite close to 180 degrees or bar so it means that this electrical length is quite close to be lambda over okay so this is an example of capacitively coupled uh, band bus filter. Capacitively coupled resonator, series resonator band bus filter. Alright. This is a response of the design capacitively coupled series resonator filter. And it can be noted that it has omega naught equal 2 gigahertz and the bandwidth is 10% as is required and 0.5 dB ribbon.